Courtney. I'll talk loud when I'm away from the mic. I'm Jim Malmquist. I work with Netmotion Wireless. Uh, by show of hands, has anybody heard of Netmotion? Are you guys customers? Ah, uh, perfect. Of Mobility XE or of locality or both? Okay. Mobility XE. Sure, Mobility XE, then our mobile VPN. And what's the account? Perfect, perfect. And your account? Roseville. Okay, so law enforcement. Any, any non-law enforcement accounts here? Or Sac Sewer. Sac Sewer is not Sac Sewer. I thought you said Sac, Sac County, but. Um, every, yeah, I do, yes. Okay, well, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a, a lot about ROI. Is that feedback? Can you guys hear that, or is it just me that's hearing that? Okay. Um, the, the, the point of the talk today was to talk about how to make sure you, you get an, an ROI on a mobile deployment. And, you know, I, I was talking earlier before we started about it, it's easier to, to discuss ROI when you have a specific customer in front of you and you know exactly what the workflow is. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what NetMotion does at the end, but we'll talk about how to achieve an ROI. And, and I pay to play. So I've got, I've got gift cards in my pocket, so anybody that's willing to to talk and share an anecdote or a story or, or offer up information to help make this go better, I'm happy to oblige with a, with a gift card to uh, buy a cup of coffee at Starbucks. So, um, so a little bit on the agenda, what we're hoping to do today. I'm gonna talk a lot about a, a new research paper that just came out, uh, Trends in Mobile Data Deployment Management. It's uh, by RY Savvy, uh, 400, um, Companies were participated that had mobile deployments, cellular mobile deployments, and, and what the importance of that, what that cellular deployment was to them and, and some of the challenges that are associated with that. So I don't, in most companies now, when it comes time to deciding whether a project is going to happen or not, it's always, well, how do we get to the ROI? What, what, what are we going to... What is, what is our return on that investment going to be? Before we can spend a dollar, what is it going to save us time? Is it going to save us uh, increase our productivity? Uh, there's got to be some value, some pain associated to the project, then how do we get an ROI based off of it? The emerging, the emerging solutions piece of it is, is some of the net motion solutions and how we can help to ensure that those projects are successful and those workflows are enhanced. And, and what we can do for that. And we've got some case studies uh, on the ROI as well. And then we'll open it up to some question and answer. So, so one, of the, one of the key takeaways that I got from the report from RY Savvy when they approached this is, again, 400 different businesses across all sorts of verticals, whether it was law enforcement, utilities, home health care, anywhere that there was a highly mobile workforce. They were asking them uh, questions on you know, um, connectivity issues. And, this was the response that the majority of the people that were surveyed said. You know, how do you determine if there's, an, if there's an issue? We ask. And it's that, can you hear me now kind of solution that Verizon had that great commercial. Because there's no, organizations don't have tools to dig into their cellular deployments to find out how things are working. It's kind of that gray area of, hey, we're spending money every month on these air cards and coverage plans and modems and rugged computers and other computers and but we don't really have insight as to how, how well they're performing. How, how much, I'm paying for a 4G plan. How often am I connecting to a 4G plan? Uh, how often am I at 2G? You know, those, those sorts of determinations. And, and so just asking the users, you're, you're gonna get a lot of different anecdotes, a lot of different stories on, well, it's great for me, but it's bad for Joe. You know, and how do, you, how do you troubleshoot that? And so that's what we're gonna kind of spend some time on is, uh, is, is talking about that. So digging in a little bit further into that RY savvy, um, research report, some of the, the key insights that they found in the report were that the data deployments are critical. So as mobile becomes more and more accepted form of, of, uh, of working and workflow processes, it becomes more and more critical to the success of an organization. So whether you're law enforcement, a utility, or home health care, the more productive you can make that worker in the field, uh, the, the better it's going to be and the more important it is to your organization. Um, and that connectivity was the number one concern. How do I get that worker connected? How do I get it securely connected and, and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing in the field? And then the, the troubleshooting piece that we talked about, you know, hey, when there are problems that exist, how do I know where to look? 
one of my uh, customers up in Oregon, a law enforcement agency, I was talking to them about it, and if they had a communications problem in a vehicle where they couldn't get an officer connected, they may go months having IT work on troubleshooting what the problem was. And at the end of it, end up just replacing all the equipment in the vehicle because they couldn't determine what it was. They couldn't replicate the problem. They couldn't, you know, it wasn't showing up consistently. So having that lack of, of troubleshooting tools is, is, is significant. Um, and then I kind of hinted towards the lack of visibility. You know, where do I have good coverage? Where do I not have good coverage? What is my best carrier of choice for my geographic region that I cover? What is the signal strength going to be? You know, do I want to pay money to upgrade to the new 4G modem when I'm not sure how much of the 4G network is covering my geographic area? Having ways to, to troubleshoot that and determine that before I make a, a, a selection on hardware or, or data plans or service plans is, is, is critical. And, and then that goes back to continually improving the process. So I may have a, a workflow process built on something, but if I don't have any way to troubleshoot it, how do I make it better? So kind of digging into the importance of, of cellular data deployments. And again, this is, this is a significant group of people, significantly sized. So it's not just one or two people that are answering. You know, it's almost 500 people that they, that they responded on this. And, and the importance of cellular data deployment to their organization very important. More than almost 80% of those who responded rely heavily on cellular data deployments. So what that tell us is that, hey, I'm spending a whole lot of money on this. It's important to the success of my business, yet I don't have any way to manage that cellular network. I have a, a, a LAN around my building, in my building. I have lots of tools to tell me where the problems might exist, where the bottlenecks are on my LAN or my Wi-Fi networks, maybe some tools to see where things are good or bad. But once I step outside of that, it's, it's, it's again, that gray area of, of, you know, how well is it? So some of the, the top concerns around the cellular data deployment, um, more than half was the reliability feature of it. Hey, once my user gets connected, how do, I, how do I keep them connected and keep them, and if they get disconnected, what happens then? How long does it take them to get re, reconnected again and, and, and re-navigate back to where they were? So this is where examples would come in handy. You know, SAC sewer, you know, if you guys have, have folks out in the field who are doing um, troubleshooting, like, hey, there's a problem somewhere, they gotta go out and fix it. So I, I'm connected, I'm a mobile worker, I'm a field service guy, I'm out in the field, I got my laptop up at, on the site, and I may be walking around doing inspection of the facility. I walk around, I'm connected here, but I walk around the corner and I lose the signal, maybe just for a second. Well, traditional products will fail at that point, and when the user gets reconnected then, the applications are no longer responding because of that dropped connection. And, and so having the insight and having the ability to prevent that from happening is, uh, is, is highly important to the people that they're responding to. So that, that's some of the stuff we'll talk about and some of the, uh, the insights for tools to, to solve those types of problems. So, you know, again, over half of them are, uh, are saying that's the most important, uh, the, the, the top concern of their cellular data deployments. And then how to make it more secure. Are there any IT security folks in the room? Yeah, so, you know, once my users leave my building, I hope they do what they say they're gonna do or what I've told them to do and connecting the, the, the device in a way that I've told them to connect it to and not using a rogue connection method or, or connecting to the network in an unprotected manner uh, can cause all kinds of, of, of problems. Um, and then, you know, controlling costs. Hey, if I've got users that have uh, air cards, and this happens a lot in law enforcement where one officer comes off a shift and another officer is going on, but the officer that's coming on hasn't, couldn't find his air card. So he borrows the guys that's coming off shift, and now he's using that one. And then they all get changed around. Then when he finds his other one, he might put the other one in the glove box. And having tools to know which air cards are being used and which ones aren't being used, who's over their data plan, who's under their data plan, you know, do we have the best plans for them? And this is just proof that that's, that's uh, of high importance to, to folks as well. So the top complaints, drop connections, um, that's kind of, that makes sense. Uh, slow data transfers, and, th and that, can, that can cause other workflow process uh, problems as well. Hey, I've got a connection, 
but it's so slow that if I lose too many packets, the application may time out, and then if it does, then the user may lose the data that was in transfer, and it causes, again, so some, some pretty significant concerns around the, the cellular data deployments and how do I make it better. So, again, you know, talking about why ROI fails in a, in a deployment is, is that going back to that, that gray area of not knowing how to manage it. You know, it, hey, I, I sent them out there and I don't know if I've enabled them with the best tools. You know, if, hey, on the north side of town, one carrier has better coverage than the south side of town, another carrier has a better, if I know my field worker is going on the north side of town, I want to make sure I've enabled them with the best equipment possible to have that best user experience in the field. And, and that's where a lot of this will fall down, is that I don't, I don't have the tools to get in there to, to troubleshoot that. So what does it mean? So this is where I, when I say I, I can give a, a specific examples within a, within a customer, it's, it's I know that if, to figure out what an ROI is, is you need information like this. You know, what are the productivity loss from a frustrated worker? If I'm a law enforcement agent and I've got to do a report at the end of the day, and I've spent 20 minutes putting information in the system, but I get disconnected in the process, and I didn't realize I was disconnected, and then I come back to it, and I realize it's not there. I, I mean, that, that's, that, that makes you know, the circular file that, you know, it's, it, it, I'm not gonna use it then, or, or I'm gonna come back in and put the bare minimum in and move on with my day. Or if I'm a home healthcare nurse, and I'm sat down with my patient and taken all their vitals and entered it in the system, but got disconnected, and then I'm wrapping things up and I realize it's gone. Think of the credibility that I've just lost with my patient that I gotta go back and ask him to do it again. So from the, from the productivity loss because of I don't have an insight into that, that, that cellular data network of where the signal strength is good and bad and, and if I do lose my signal, how do I get it reconnected without losing that information? Uh, it, it's, it can be tremendous to, to, to not being able to achieve an ROI. Um, the help desk. Hey, you know, as those as mobile deployments become more and more prevalent, you have more and more people out in the field. That's going to raise the, the support costs, right? Because there's more people out there in that same. Hey, I can't get connected. How do you troubleshoot that? So now you got mobile mobile IT workers trying to troubleshoot a connect, connectivity problem, while the mobile worker can't work either. So now you got two people working on the same problem, and and again, it, it can it cause a significant loss of an ROI. Right, and, and it can be multiple IT people with, with uh, you know, trying to troubleshoot. Um, and, and then, it, you know, sometimes what I've heard even customers saying is, hey, we've gone to, well, we'll take a, a laptop with the same air card, same software, and go out to that site where they were and walk around with it to see if they can replicate problems and, and, if, it, and if it happens the same way. So, um, you know, not very productive use of anyone's time, I, I, I would agree. So. And where it, where it really becomes important is in the failed business processes. And you're betting your business or the success of your organization on these types of deployments. And when you can't troubleshoot them and it gets down to the customer level, you know, that's, that's where the impact can be the, the most severe. Um, and one of our other customers uh, here in Sacramento State Agency, a large deployment of inspection uh, agents, people who go out into facilities to inspect them. And they'll do these inspections and they'll save them on their hard drives or their computers. Instead of trying to connect and do it live, they'll do it there, and then, then they'll transfer that data off at a certain intervals of time. Like maybe at the end of the day, they'll connect to a, a networker. And, and when you don't have tools that can help with that process and you lose information or you get disconnected in the middle of the process, and now you've got an inspector that's gone to four sites, done inspections, he's maybe traveling, and you got that information on the laptop, and in the middle of the night, you got disconnected and it lost it all. Now that guy has to go back out and do those four inspections again. So it, 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 it can become uh, it, it detrimental really fast. So how do, you, how do you measure that? How do, I, how do I determine if my mobile deployment is going to be successful and be able to achieve an ROI? So it's this type of data that you need. You know, how long does it take your mobile worker to get, you start from the very beginning. I push power on my computer in the morning. How long does it take me to get connected to the applications I need to do my job? Now if I get disconnected, is it the lather, rinse, repeat scenario? It's going to take me five minutes to get that to back to where I was. That happens seven or eight times a day. So if you can measure that process out, that, that'll help you get to, to determine, hey, if I implement tools that prevent that type of thing or enable workers to get connected faster, can I get to an ROI on, on a mobile deployment? Can I increase the, yeah? What we found when this was happening with our staff is that um, they were 
they started redundancy. They were they were entering their stuff in the computer, uh, waiting for it to crash or disconnect. <laughs> and so they started writing everything down also. So then we've got their boss, who's the MRO's uh, superintendent, comes and says, why are we using computers? Let's just go back to paper. Right. So then, then you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Well, we got all these other systems that we've paid lots of money for. I just spent a million dollars on Oracle or SAP or Remedy or whatever, and and we need to make sure that we're, we're yeah, no, and and we right, and and where I where I, the health right, no, especially because you have to take in your worker into consideration as well. Home home health care tends to have a, and even law enforcement, those workers tend to be specialized in what they do. They may not be technologically savvy, and they'll get their frustration. Their patience level is very thin with it because, with the with the example of the healthcare, where I said I'm, I'm working with you and you're my patient. I, I lose credibility as a as a caretaker real fast if this doesn't work, and I got to redo things with you. And then the custom, you know, I, I, then I'm going to go to charting on a piece of paper. I'm going to do my reports handwritten, and then how much time am I spending at the end of a day in putting that information into the system? Right. I got a Starbucks card for you too, so uh, thank you, thank you for the input. I, uh, I, I, the regulatory compliance piece is is significant in that. Hey, if I got a HIPAA compliancy, NERC or FERC in the utility space, I have CJIS compliancy. If I have that in my agency, where I have to make sure that I'm compliant from a state or federal uh, compliance standpoint, you know, securing that. So I'm not fined, or if I lose a laptop that's got customer data on it, I don't have that big black eye, and you know, that's even that's even worse. So going down the list here, you know, to figure out, you know, are we measuring our ROI correctly? How much time do you spend in IT to troubleshoot that? You know, if it's not just the downtime of the mobile worker, it's also the, the down, the, the, what could a guy in IT be doing if he wasn't having to do those, those support tickets of getting people reconnected in the field? Uh, the, the worker with no connection in the field, the, the, the loss of uh, workflow process there. We talked about data getting uh, transferred or lost. You know, what, what, does that, what does that mean to the organization? All right, so let's, let's keep moving here. So this, this is where the, the emerging solutions piece comes in. This is, I, I didn't want to come up here and make this a net motion commercial because that's not what it's all about. It's, it's trying to, an educational form. We're talking about ROI and, and what factors need to be taken into consideration when you're looking at a deployment or, or, or measuring your own deployment. But there are tools that are in the, the workforce right now to, to help with this. And, and that's, that's a, the net motion piece of it. So again, keep this really interactive. If you guys have questions or if you've heard of something else, we can, we can talk about that as well. So the, the connectivity piece, the problem of getting connected. So if I'm a law enforcement agent and I'm driving around, uh, I got my laptop on a docking station, I'm logged into CAD, I may lose that signal a dozen times a day. Maybe, maybe less, maybe more. But every time it happens, I get disconnected, the VPN fails, and the application stop responding. So even if I get the connection back and the VPN rebuilds itself, I gotta close that application down that I was working in and relaunch it, re-log back in. And with the DOJ compliance issues for, uh, there's some form of advanced authentication that needs to be in place, whether it's you know, two-factor or proximity card readers or something, so that's coming. Well, those officers are going to have to not only put my username and password in, but I got to have the little key fob, I got to have my badge I'm swiping to have that other form of authentication. So every time they get disconnected, they got to do that over and over again. So the time that it takes to get reconnected increases. So if I've got a solution that will, hey, my VPN is up and, I'm, and I'm, I got all my applications going through it, but I, f I lose the signal for a moment, I need something that's going to hold those, those sessions open. So then when I get my connection back, everything flows as if nothing happened. And this, the idea of session persistence becomes even more important. But I can't just have open sessions dangling out there because then anybody could grab onto that. And so it's got to be in a secure way. So it's got to be a FIPS 140-2 or some form of Suite B encrypted uh, tunnel that's going to protect that data that's in there. In fact, you're going to say something you're on the security side. <laughs> no? OK. Um, having a solution that can track users in the field to say, 
I know what applications you're using. I know what networks you're connecting to. And maybe we know that it a, becomes a, uh, an educational thing where, hey, we've invested money in this, but you're still going back to the paper. And we can tell because you're not logging into the application maybe once a week or twice a week. So, hey, this is how we want you to, to do it. Having something in place that can set policies for how users access the corporate network when they're in the, the building, that you can move that when they're connecting outside the building. Having a solution that can do that is helpful as well. So, hey, I want them to follow a certain procedure when they're not connecting to the LAN. That way I know that my applications and my network is safe. Okay. So NetMotion has, has two solutions. We have a locality solution, and I'll talk about that, about that first. Cellular network performance management. What does it do? It helps you identify the cause of poor uh, cellular connectivity. Small piece of software that resides on the laptop, software that would reside on a server somewhere. It doesn't need to be in your network, it just needs to be in the cloud, hosted anywhere. Every five seconds, a laptop that has locality on it will take a snapshot of the available cellular network that it has associated to that machine. So in my particular machine, I have two. I have an air card that a USB I can plug in the side that's from Sprint, and I have an AT&T air card Gobi inside. So every five seconds, locality will take a snapshot of both as long as I have the modem in. They don't have to be connected. It just has to be ready to connect. So I open up the communication manager. It's ready to connect. If I'm connected, it's fine. But everywhere I take that laptop, it's going to measure and monitor the cellular network where I am. It's going to grab the GPS coordinates every five seconds, the, the cellular information, and information from the modem that I have in my machine. Every 30 minutes, it's going to send that up to the, to the, uh, the server, or it'll start building out uh, reports that you can look at, and I'll, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in, uh, as we move forward. The other solution we have is called Mobility XE. It's a mobile VPN solution. So most organizations have a corporate standard VPN, say it's Cisco, Nortel, you know, Juniper, something. Um, and then they're, now that they're becoming more and more mobile, they're buying mobile applications, they're buying mobile computers, laptops, uh, tablets, et cetera, but they're relying on that same corporate standard VPN to handle a highly mobile environment. And there's a whole other category of VPNs, mobile VPNs, that most organizations haven't heard of, and, and we fall into that category. Nothing, nothing wrong with a Cisco VPN, it just wasn't designed for a highly mobile environment that, hey, I'm reconnecting, disconnecting, reconnecting, grabbing Wi-Fi, getting to the cellular, it's not built for that. It, it, you'll, your users will experience difficulty with that because of the application session persistence that I talked about, uh, about earlier. Um, but you don't have to get rid of Cisco to have NetMotion. You can keep it for the corporation, but if you have 10 people that are highly mobile, hey, well, then we'll remove the Cisco VPN for those and put NetMotion on for those highly mobile people and see what they experience and see if it gets better. So eliminate those challenges caused by the disconnects. Um, the security piece, you know, making sure that the data is secure, and then the um, visibility into how those mobile workers are, are using and accessing the network. So let's jump into locality. I kind of gave you the high-level overview of, you know, client software on the client, software that resides on a server, whether it's a VM server or it's hosted in the cloud or, or, or in your network, it doesn't matter. And again, you're gathering data every five seconds on the client, passing it up to the server, Server builds the reports. What kind of reports do I build for you? How about coverage reports? So everywhere your users go, it's giving you information at that exact moment in time of what that cellular network looked like. Because it's going to look a lot different at 5 o'clock than it will look at 10 o'clock in the afternoon. The, the more that the users, more users that get onto the network, that degrades the signal for everybody. In it. And so being able to have a map of my geographic area, where my users go, of what my cellular connectivity looks like, is, is, is pretty cool in, in being able to say, what type of equipment do I want to give that mobile worker before they go out into the field? If I know that the right side of the screen is all red, and I say we're looking at uh, Sprint's coverage, this is a map of Seattle. Let's say, for some reason, on the right side of town, they don't have good connectivity. But let's say Verizon does. So hey, I know workers that go over there, I want to make sure they have Verizon air cards. Everywhere else, they can have a Sprint air card. So those types of determinations, how do I enable my mobile workers to have the best experience possible. Um, this is just the, I call it the sexy part of, of locality, because the real meat and potatoes becomes the, the troubleshooting capability of it. Knowing what that signal strength is, is 
is, is great because it allows me to know what may be causing problems or what may not be causing problems. So if a user calls in for support that can't get connected in the field, nine out of 10 times, the finger is immediately probably going to be pointed at the carrier. It must be the carrier. The network must be down. Something must be happening. But I would probably be willing to bet that seven out of 10 times or eight out of 10 times, it's not the carrier, that there may be some other issues going on. Anybody else has driven that same route to see what they've reported. So you can use the data, the other data that you're gathering to, to determine it as well. And you can kind of see the red and the orange, the yellow and the green. Uh, that depicts what the signal strength looks like on the route that they drove. And if they get disconnected, it'll have a red X on there. So you can run this in real time and press play and watch the vehicle move down the route, turning green, yellow, red, and see where they're disconnected so you know exactly where it is. And if you can isolate it down to saying, hey, it's in this area and we see that the cellular connectivity is bad there, hey, hey move somewhere else, see if you can get connected, try it again. Does that solve your problem? If not, well, then let's start digging into it further to see what it is. Let's take a look at the inventory that you have in your, on your computer. What's your modem look like? I see you're using a, Go, a Gobi modem, make, model, serial number, firmware version, et cetera. I can see all that because it's reporting it through the locality server. So you can make determinations of, hey, I'm, I, you're using a router that's eight versions out of date on this firmware. Well, let's update your firmware and see if that solves the problem. So the, give, having the ability to see what the users are using and what their deployments are, and it also gives you the ability to say, hey, we're trying to standardize to make sure everybody has the same thing. If users haven't been upgraded, you'll know it because locality will report it back. And then I think the final report there is uh, data usage. So locality is also monitoring the usage that's coming through that bandwidth. So I can run a report. I'm Say I'm meeting with my Verizon rep. I want to make that a productive um, session. I run a report of all my Verizon users. And I can say, hey, you know what? I got a guy that's off the chart up there on the top um, over his plan. Hey, that might be ringing some bells. I want to look into that to see what applications are running on that machine that's causing him to use 10 times the amount of data that everybody else is. But that may be another troubleshooting mechanism. Hey, maybe I've got a rogue application that's somehow gotten on this machine that's sucking up all the bandwidth, and that's why you can't get connected, because this application's causing it. So again, it's giving you ways to insight into your, your deployment. And then down on the bottom there, you know, the, the, the graphs are, are users who aren't using it at all. So maybe that Verizon rep, I want to say, hey, I need new plans for these guys and I need to make sure I get this power user a different plan as well. And if there's zero usage, I want to cancel those, those deployments or reissue those to somebody else who will use them. So that's, that's locality. I guess I could stop there and ask questions. I kind of just feel like I'm jabbering on up here. Anybody have any questions on, on that or, or have it had experience with, with disconnects in the field and frustrations on not being able to figure out what it was? Right, no, it, great point. Locality, we've only been selling it for a year now, and it's had tremendous success, especially in the law enforcement space. Um, and we've talked to the law enforcement agencies about that, and there's some sensitivity about sharing that type of data right now. I think it will become more acceptable, and I, I would imagine that either we would do it, one of our partners, or one of the carriers would offer that as a service. So instead of buying the software, you buy a right to use license for a dollar a month or whatever, and you put your information in, but you can also then look at everybody who's done it and look at their information as well. I, I think it's a great business model, and, and, and our, our team is looking into that. So, but right now it is. So when we send you, when, we, when you buy locality, you have a blank map. You load the software on your laptops, they drive around, they collect the data, they start to populate that map as you, as you, uh, as you build it out. So, and, you, and then you own that data. So if you want to give it to the fire department or to another agency, by all means. But again, it's only about the, a third of the value of what locality is. The real, the real value is, is how do I troubleshoot when there is an issue? And if I don't have locality on that laptop, uh, it's hard to see what's going on there. So, thank you. I got a, I got a Starbucks card for you too. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay, any other questions, thoughts? All right. So these are some of the um, uh, case studies for locality. Let's, let's look at them one at a time. This is LAPD. So they were having some issues in, uh, in coverage. 
they, they, loaded, they loaded locality onto their, I think they put it on 100 uh, squad cars, laptops, had them go out and, and collect data, and this was some of the information that they got back. So you, know, you can see why an officer would be frustrated with this type of insight into the cellular connectivity. Yeah? Did you say the data? Are they actively having to do something, or is locality yeah. doing Great point. Great point. It, it all runs behind the scenes. The user doesn't even need to know it's there. It's, it's, um, they don't have to launch anything. They, they power on their laptop. And as soon as that, that, net, that modem is ready to connect, locality starts gathering details. So it, it doesn't have to be connected, just ready to connect. And it's, and it's gathering it. So great point. And, and any one of those squares, it's kind of hard to see here, but I can click on it. This is, it's, a, it's a typical web application looking. You, know, you see the tabs across the top there in the blue. You can click on each one of those to get different reports. Uh, if I click on one of those squares like where it's red, I can bring up an icon that will show me the average signal strength, the minimum signal strength, and the maximum signal strength for that location, and then the number of samples that I've gathered from right there. So if I only got one sample and it was red, it may not be as valuable to me as if I have 1,700 samples from that site, and it's all, all of them are you know, bad signal strength. I can feel pretty confident that, hey, that, that area doesn't, isn't, doesn't have good coverage on it. So. Um, Wyoming Police Department. You kind of expect this in Wyoming, though. Um, you know, highly rural area. You know, probably where those lines are are highway lines and towers here and there on it. So, uh, but where you wouldn't expect it is, you know, hey, if you are on a highway and it all of a sudden turns red, it's, it's hey, why? And, and sharing this information with the carriers is important because they may not know that they have problems in certain areas. And they may, but they, they may not. And they'll do some analysis to say, hey, there's enough people that live in this space to, that, to garner uh, increasing our towers there, and as they did for the Oregon State Patrol. Um, Verizon stepped up, and once they, because you can download these maps and, and then email them to people to say, hey, here's what my users are experiencing with your product. And, and uh, it, it sort of, the carriers have a, a mixed feeling about it, because they're afraid it's going to point out the egg on their face. But they also are excited about it because it's going to tell them when it's not an egg on their face. And like I said, you know, nine out of 10 times, they're going to get blamed for it anyway. But seven out of 10 times, it's probably not them. So you know, th that's my experience. You guys may have different, different experiences with it. But uh, I, I've, I found that they typically get blamed for everything. And then City of Riverside, again, you can see uh, pretty significant uh, non-covered areas. So uh, one of the airlines that, that purchased locality was able to use it for technicians who work on planes. They have to do inspections of it, make sure that they're, they're, they're able to, to release them to be able to take off or, or whatever they're doing with it. And, and you can see where they're running into problems. And, and now, if I know that I've got connectivity problems there, and I don't have a mobile VPN to help persist those sessions, how much time am I spending trying to reconnect to those applications so I can release that plane to let it take off? So you can see how quickly that that can become detrimental to your business process. If a guy can't get connected to release it, the plane is delayed now. So that affects their, 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 their stats and their customer satisfaction across the board. Uh, let's, let's jump forward. Let's, let's talk about... Uh, so let's talk about Mobility XE. So again, mobile VPN, software-only solution, software that resides on the client, software that resides on a server. So the server can be a virtual server. The one caveat here is that, that this server does need to be either in your DMZ or inside your network. Because that software is looking to connect with one another. The client software and, and the server software are looking to make a connection. That builds a VPN tunnel. So NetMotion does things differently in that the server software sits in front of the applications. So as the users make the connection, that information is passed through the NetMotion server, and then it hits those applications. And I'll show you why that's important when we, when we get to it. So I'm a mobile worker starting my day from home, let's say. I got my home Wi-Fi, and I'm connecting to that. I build the VPN up, I've, I've, I'm ready to go. We operate as a service. So when, when, I, when I push power, control, delete, put my username and password in, I don't have to do anything else. The computer's Radio comes on, grabs a connection, NetMotion will build the VPN right behind that. So you don't need to have a user have to start, click the VPN, launch it, put a password in, do that. It's, NetMotion is configured to operate as a service. It can be configured the other way, but most customers tend to do it this way. It's just more efficient for them. 
If you do have the requirement for some form of advanced authentication, NetMotion can integrate with most of them. Um, in fact, I, I think we've only come across one that we haven't been able to, to connect in with. So you can enhance that secure mobile computing experience. So the idea of application session persistence comes in here now. So you see the user, I've launched my applications, I've moved away from my home Wi-Fi. At some point, I'm gonna hit the edge of that network, and my VPN is going to disconnect because I've lost the network connection. So what NetMotion does then is that server component that sits in front of the applications, at the moment that it senses that the client is not there, turns to the applications and says, hold on, the network's busy. It shrinks the TCP IP receipt window down to zero. The applications don't realize that the client's not there. So they wait. They don't send any more packets until they get the signal that, hey, it's all clear. When the, when the server is now still looking for the client, when they see that the client's got that signal back, we automatically rebuild that tunnel, that server and the client build the connection again, and the TCP IP receipt window gets opened back up, information starts to flow again, as if they were never disconnected. So it prevents that user from having to re-log back in, re-authenticate with their RSA token or their other two form of authentication, whatever they're doing. This is the secret sauce that makes NetMotion popular amongst highly mobile workers. Because that process alone right there, every time I get disconnected, reconnected, and I may be on the carrier signal, connected to a 3G modem, uh, 3G network, but I come in range of a 4G network. That can be a disconnect, reconnect with some carriers. And that can cause you, and if you're on the fringe of where that, that's overlapping, it may be bouncing back and forth all the time. So if the user doesn't realize and having to re-log back in every time, they'll stay logged into the applications more, put more information into it, and overall it'll be a better experience for them and for the organization and for your customer. So session persistence is, 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 is pretty crucial. And then being able to roam from a connection method to a connection method without having the user have to do anything. So if I'm a law enforcement agent and I'm connected on my, my air card in my laptop, but I pull up within range of one of our yards and there's Wi-Fi there. Well, NetMotion can be configured to automatically connect that user when it senses that that network is present. So instead of building the tunnel over the carrier, it's now switching and building the carrier over the Wi-Fi. And then with our policy engine, which I'll get to in a minute, I can set rules that enable certain things to happen when certain conditions are met. The condition being, I'm on the right network now, I want to bring down the in-car video. So I'm driving around with video cameras, collecting data on license plates, storing that on the vehicle, and I don't want to push that over the cellular network because it takes too much bandwidth. So the condition is met that I'm on the Wi-Fi now, offload that video. And then when I drive away from it, session persistence will take over, so you're not losing any of that. So it'll wait until the next time that condition is met and start that process over for you. So the policy can be very granular into what you're, uh, what you're allowing it to do or what you're wanting it to do. Don't allow certain applications to, be, to go through the tunnel. So I can set a policy that says, um, let me see if I can get there. No, it's not included on that. I can set a policy that says block Internet Explorer. My mobile users don't need the Internet. So the next time the user goes to click on the Internet Explorer, it won't let it through the tunnel. So I can say, hey, you know, block it from 8 to 5 only allow this certain application, or set priority to a certain application so that the bandwidth consumption can be used by that application and it's not having a bad user experience. Um, we talked about best bandwidth selection. We talked about roaming. So, all right, so that was the, the commercial for, for NetMotion. Um, one of our, our, um, lar our largest, single largest customer is AT&T. They have over 55,000 field service workers using NetMotion to connect into the applications. And these are some of the problems that they were have. You know, a high volume of, of help desk calls because workers weren't being able to get connected. Um, dropped connections were causing need to re-authenticate and re-log back in. And it was very slow. So they implemented NetMotion. And you know, being able to increase 1.8 jobs a day for an organization the size of, of AT&T is, is is pretty significant. And there's your ROI right there. So if you're measuring the time spent by those IT workers and the mobile worker and the productivity level, you can get to an ROI right there. Just because they're not having to re-log in every time they get disconnected. So it, you can really quickly achieve an ROI just, just with that one feature and, and, and not, not counting anything else.
One out of, one out of our, our health care. Any health care customers in the room? No. That takes us to 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes till the hour. So um, I think I'll open it up for questions. Yeah. Thank you. Ever hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. that. That's usually the first question that comes. First question is usually how much does it cost? Second question is usually, well, what operating system does it work on? Um, so right now it's a Windows-based solution. Windows Mobile or the full Windows operating system. Version 10 is due out in August, and version 10 will include support for Windows 8 and the Android operating system. So from a tablet perspective, we've got you covered on Windows Mobile tablets and Android tablets. We would, we would like nothing more than to have an iOS client. In fact, we're thinking of building a solution that's more of like an SSL type VPN solution for iOS just because everybody's asking for it, but it wouldn't be able to provide the same functionality that our other clients do because Apple won't give us access to the um, APIs to build the integration that we need. So we've, we've repeatedly asked, begged, and it's law enforcement that's driving that, which surprised me. They want iPads in the car. And, and, uh, but you know what, my, my, my question right back to organizations like that usually are, how many iPads do you have them deployed right now? And what applications are they connecting to? Because law enforcement, there's not many CAD vendors, if any at all, computer-aided di dispatch vendors, that support the iOS as well. So they want it for the vehicle, but they can't get CAD on it. So it, it, it creates a, hey, if you build it, we will come. But everybody's kind of like, well, do we build it or not? I mean, so I, I think we would want nothing more. They do a lot of other things with cabs and cars nowadays, though. Yeah, no, no, I'm not saying it wouldn't be valuable. I, I'm agreeing with you 100%. 100%. So, so it is a, a challenge. So the next time you talk to your Apple rep, make sure you say, we need a mobile VPN, and, and we need it to do these kinds of things. You know, what are you going to do for me? Uh, for Mac, Mac, Mac OS, no, we, we don't have that either. Same restriction? Uh, no, no, you know, I, I think that there could be a way to make that work. I think it's been demand for our organization. Of We just haven't had the, the requests coming for that. And, in, in in, you know, we'd have to dedicate resources to build that. And it's, it, you know, we, I think we weigh everything to say, hey, we want this functionality or this functionality. Where does that fall on the list? And who do we put resources on to? So, um, I definitely can log a feature request for you if, if that's something that you're, you're, you're interested in. So, yeah. Maybe another city law enforcement question. You say you know, the same. We continue to get weak patches from the net portion and depends on that load trader. Could you guys kind of work together to kind of resolve some of the issues you specifically have when you're doing those two products? So the arbitrator is the in-car video, and in net motion, there's, there, there are policy. So the way our product works is, is there's the, the base product, and then there's modules that reside on top to add additional functionality. And the module, the policy module is needed to make Arbitrator work the way that you want it to work, to have the user experience to be the way that you want it to be. So do you have policy module? Yeah. So do you have the policy in place? Oh, really? Well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you know I, I will pass that on to our service department because I work really well with the Panasonic reps. I, I, could, I could make my quota going around where they're selling arbitrator, selling net motion right alongside them. So we work really well together. Um, for, I, I, I will pass that on, that, on, on the service side because uh, I know that um, our support should never point the finger at anybody else. They, should, they may say, there's a problem there, but they will still help you find the solution to that problem with that organization. Uh, they usually won't just say, oh, we'll go talk to them and we'll see you later. Um, so if, if that's the case, we need, it, we need it to escalate it. 
So, but I can assure you that we will, we will help you with that, and I'll, I'll work it out. So, great. Any other, any other thoughts? You know, I, I know they are, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just to dovetail on these gentlemen's conversations, we've not much of work in like a, like a scenario like, like a police car, but you can like, like a mobile hot pot where they can run multiple uh, detailers, mm -hmm. like and stuff like that, so you have kind of like Wi-Fi and all that. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know much of work in a scenario like that. Absolutely. You know, plug an Apple tablet in, it's a mobile hot pot. Ooh, I'm watch the edge there. Absolutely. So. We have a lot of customers who will use a MiFi or a, a trunk-mounted modem that's in the vehicle that creates a Wi-Fi bubble around the vehicle. They're connecting their MDT to that connection, and they've got a license of net motion on that MDT. Then they would also have, a say, an e-ticketing machine. So they get out of the vehicle, and they walk up, and they'll, they'll write somebody a ticket on the e-ticketing machine. That's connecting to the network, net motion license on that, using that same connection method. And they may have an APHIS, automated fingerprint identification system, with a little device, put your thumbprint on it. That's connecting with a net motion license as well. So we have customers that do that all the time. Um, so there's no restriction on, we, we're, we take an agnostic approach to the connection method. I, I don't care if it's a Starbucks Wi-Fi, a MiFi, a carrier card, the LAN, satellite connectivity. Uh, however you're getting connected, we'll build that VPN tunnel over that. So if you want to connect the Mac to that MiFi, no problem. We just won't be able to put a VPN, encrypted VPN tunnel over that connection for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, what's, what's exciting is we're on dot 1.6, dot I think, for locality. The next version 2 of locality, they've talked about having support for MiFi devices as well. So right now, it's limited to USB modems, Gobi modems, and a handful of trunk-mounted modems. The most widely sold modems usually is what we, where we started. Because each individual modem has to be certified. And it goes through a whole process. OK, yeah, we can collect the data from that. Because all of them collect it a little bit differently and make sure that locality will, will work with it. So MiFi is coming for the locality product as well. So. And there are other solutions on the market uh, that have similar functionality to locality. But typically what I found is that it it's, gathers it for a certain kind of modem. So if you buy the XYZ modem, you can get locality type of information for that modem. And again, the agnostic approach of I don't care what the modem looks like, which carrier it's from, we're just going to gather those details for you and send it out. So thank you. Any other questions, guys? I think I'm pushing the hour here. Thoughts? So I appreciate, I, I, uh, hopefully that was valuable information on, on the ROI piece. Um, I know that it can be challenging. And we have, we have some spreadsheets that I can, I can come in and, and help fill it out, because the more detailed you get on that, uh, the better. And if you're looking to evaluate one of our solutions, we'll give you the software for free, and we'll help you determine, are you going to be able to get to an ROI? And in, in, in doing all that, that pre-work of measuring your processes now, and then once now you've got that motion in place, what are the improvements? And we'll help you measure that to make sure that it is something that's profitable for you. So I owe some, some coffee cards here. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Appreciate the question. <laughs>